Hello and welcome. Let's begin our chapel this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, creator of all things, you give us all that we need for body and life. Lord Jesus Christ, by your suffering and death, you have opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Holy Spirit, Counselor and Guide, you have raised us from death by your powerful word. Lord, fill our hearts with thanksgiving for your mercy and love. We pray. O Holy Spirit, come to us with your comforting word, which alone can drive away our doubts. Direct us to our Savior, Jesus, so that we may trust in him with our whole heart. Amen. We'll sing our next hymn, Christ is our Cornerstone. is our cornerstone on him alone we build with his true saints alone the courts of heaven are filled on his great love our hopes we place of present grace and joys above oh then with hymns of praise these hallowed courts shall ring our voices we God do now and evermore draw near Accept each faithful vow and all your children here And more and more on those who pray each holy day Your blessing hold Here may we gain from heaven the grace which we once given be with us evermore until that day when all the blessed to endless rest are called away this game look familiar at all you ever played the game trouble with the pop -a -matic bubble in the middle. If you've played it before, that, then you're familiar with really the only way that you can get into trouble in the game is if somebody else pops a number and as they move their pegs around the board, they end up landing on your spot. And if they do, you're in trouble. That means you have to go all the way back to the start if somebody lands on your spot. That's how you get into to trouble. Of course, that is just a game, isn't it? You recognize that trouble is something that we face on a regular basis uh, on a much bigger scale in real life. And oftentimes it's, it's not a game. It's nothing to, to play around with. Sometimes it can be a little more serious. We hear of mom or dad losing a job or things are tight for our families and they're trying to make ends meet. Trouble can come when you get caught doing something that you weren't supposed to do and mom or dad found out or a teacher finds out. Trouble comes when you butt heads or you have conflict with other classmates or you're fighting with your, your siblings. We recognize that we face all kinds of trouble and of course we're, we're apart from each other because of the trouble of a, a virus that is impacting the whole world right now. 
So we're familiar with trouble uh, in a way that is, is not fun like it is in a game. Jesus has something to tell us when we are troubled, though. He encourages us and reminds us that though we're going to have these kinds of troubles and face them in our day-to-day -day lives, he says that they're only temporary. And because of what he has done and because of what he's preparing for us, we don't have to worry about those kinds of troubles. Listen to the words that Jesus spoke to his disciples to comfort them in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. He said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. I have a question for you. Are you afraid of your bedroom? Probably not, I would imagine. Your bedroom isn't typically a scary place. In fact, it's probably the exact opposite. It's a place that we feel safe. And secure it's a place that we associate with with naps and sleeping and rest and just being able to shut the door and be on our own or play whatever we might wish to do bedrooms aren't a, a scary thing Jesus says to you that that he went home to heaven to prepare a room for you a, a place that is going to be much more secure much more safe than even your own bedroom and you know why Listen to the last part again. He said, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. The reason that place in heaven is going to be so wonderful is not just because it's not here on earth, and it's not even going to be just because it's home in heaven. The reason it's going to be so great is because we're going to be with Jesus. Now, it's true that he promises us that he's with us while we're here on earth, and he is, though we can't see him. But when we're home in heaven, in that place that he's preparing for us, we will actually be with him. And stop and think of what you have to be afraid of when you are in the presence of, when you are with Jesus. Absolutely nothing. Even the devil himself, the, the, the scariest enemy we could ever imagine, couldn't overcome Jesus. And if Jesus is with us when he brings us home in heaven to that place, that room that he has prepared for us, what trouble do we have to be afraid of? None. Nothing is going to overcome Jesus. Nothing is stronger than he is. No fear is going to, to give us any reason to be afraid in his presence. No trouble, no challenge, no hardship, no struggle. In his presence with Jesus by our side, it doesn't stand a chance. He says elsewhere that he's overcome the world. Anything that you could possibly imagine, any trouble that you could possibly experience, when we're home, when Jesus brings us to that room, that place he's prepared for us, we will have nothing to be afraid of ever again. Troubles this side of heaven, they'll come, they'll go some worse than others, but Jesus comforts us. He reminds us that our hearts don't need to be troubled because everything here is temporary. It won't last forever. There will come a time when Jesus will take you and he'll take me and he'll take all of his believers home to heaven where we will not need to be afraid of any trouble whatsoever. Why? Because we will be with Jesus. If Jesus did what he did to make you his own. If Jesus gave up his own life for you, if Jesus paid the price for your sins, then he's overcome every possible trouble. That means you have nothing to be afraid of, only every reason to be comforted. We join together in speaking responsively selected verses of our psalm, Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous.
For the word of the Lord is right and true. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. For he spoke, and it came to be. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We bow our heads and fold our hands and join together in prayer. Dear Lord God, we know that this world is filled with troubles, troubles of, of every sort that can weigh on us on a daily basis. Yet just as you comforted your disciples, comfort us also with the assurance that our hearts do not need to be troubled, because just as surely as you have risen from the dead and ascended into heaven, so surely are you preparing a place for us. And if you've gone to such lengths, Lord Jesus, assure us that you will also come to get us one day and take us home to heaven. And that will be a place that will be free from any trouble because you will be there and we will be with you. May we long for those days and may that assurance, that confidence, and that future guide us and carry us through our troubles in this life. We ask it in Jesus' name and we join together to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We'll sing our closing hymn, I Am Jesus, Little Lamb.